what's up? We got Luke Davis, pro surfer, our, our first surfer on the Stevie Weeby show. Thank you, brother. What Thanks for is, having me, dude. What long is, time. It's been a long time. Thank you so much, man. How did we, uh, let's go back uh, down the memory lane. How did we link, how did I meet you? Do you remember? Uh, I think through Pat, through Pat Tenori and with uh, Cho. I think that's when we first met, right? Yeah. 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 And um, man, we got along right away, didn't we? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It was in Huntington. It was in Orange County, right? Somewhere. Yeah, I think it was maybe Newport or something like around there. Yeah. 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 Man. So the, like, again, you're our first surfer. You know, we're, we're up to, we're close to 200 episodes. You're our first surfer. I've had skaters. I've had DJs, rappers. You're our first surfer. Wow. I'm honored. What do you think about that? I'm very honored. Thank you. I want to, <laughs> I wanted to get into your history, you as a surfer. So where are you originally from? Uh, I'm from San Clemente, but I live in Mar Vista now. That's what's up. It's okay. a shame we couldn't do it in real life. I know. Next I time. Well, you know, because of COVID and everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. but at least you can do this, like video chatting. Yeah, this is better than nothing, you know, it's, it's content, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and so were you, did you grow up at the beach? How did you get into surfing? Um, well, it was my dad who kind of brought me out. He brought me surfing at three, and I learned to surf at three, and then I just kept doing it. Yeah. Three years old? Yeah, with a life jacket on, and he would bring Whoa. me and put me in the front of his board, and we'd do it together. And then I gradually like started doing it on my own. Wow! So it's in your it's in your uh, family history. Your so your father was a surfer. Yeah. Was he professional as well? No, not a pro surfer, but he just he kind of moved to the beach because he loved surfing, and that's right. kind of how I got introduced to it. So do you remember? Because I was so, I mean obviously that was so long ago. Do you remember the first time you actually stood up on the board? Yeah, I have one memory in San Clemente. It was like, I was kind of wrapped around my dad's neck and mm -hmm. he was paddling out and I had a Mickey Mouse uh, life jacket on and he stood up on the board and like flung me over his shoulders and put me in the front of the board and we what? went in. That's like my first memory. Oh my God. And then how did you, what was your progression after that? Like how, do, how, does, how does that even work um, in the surf uh, like trajectory? Like do you, start out as an amateur do you just go to a certain break like how does that work um yeah kind of you just start doing like for fun it starts for fun like for fun just like anything like skateboarding or painting yeah it's just like a fun thing like oh mm -hmm. i love doing this so i'm gonna keep doing it and then gradually like turned into competing and doing yeah. all that type of stuff so it's kind of like a gradual progression and then i'm somehow doing it still so that's crazy. Yeah. It's just now, like a thing I do for fun that turned into a job too. So it's crazy. And then what, how, how do you even learn like, like cutbacks? Like how do you learn how to go down the line and read the ocean and all that? I always wondered like, how, does that come naturally or like, how does that work? I, I think it's just time in the water. Like the more time you spend in the water and then watching people like uh, I watched a lot of Tom Curran growing up who was mm -hmm. like, my idol growing up as a surfer. So explain, kind of like, explain uh, who Tom Kern is to uh, the viewers and, and listeners. Uh, they Tom might Kern not know. Is, he's, he's kind of like widely renowned as like one of the best surfers probably ever mm -hmm. multiple time world champion and like just amazing style. So I think it's a mixture of like surfing a lot and then watching your favorite people surf and kind of like emulating that together. Yeah. yeah emulating that. Now, mm -hmm. I personally want to know this because because I used to bodyboard. Oh, OK. <laughs> see that response. <laughs> Do you see that response? <laughs> the shame. <laughs> so let me just I'm going to I'm, 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 I'm I'm be honest. Wait, hold up. Let out. me finish. Let me finish. So is bodyboarding looked at like rollerblading to skateboarders? Maybe. Yeah. Similar. <laughs> I don't do it anymore, brother. I'm sorry. I had to admit it, you know, No, but I, I, I know bodyboarders that are super good and they, they rip and charge, but it's kind of, there's, it's those kind are of a few. Diff, yeah. A few, but yeah. I'm not friends with a lot of them, but there's, there's good bodyboarders for sure. But yeah. I think it's like 
bodyboarders kind of surf different spots most of the time. Mostly like shore breaks. Yeah, like shore break type of waves and stuff like that. Like the wedge so, or something like that. Wedge and like yeah. kind of similar waves to that. So it's different. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know how I knew I knew I knew it back then in the 90s because I'd be out in Solana, you know, kind of just paddling. And the, the local surfers would slash me. They, they would like, they would like, they would splash water, like, get the hell out of here. And then like, would, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. You're like, I'm just, I'm trying to have fun. Yeah. But I knew back then I'm like, there's a disconnect here with, you know, the, uh, this community in the water, like those people stay away from, cause they, it's kind of like ownership. Like don't your area is over there. Stay over there. Don't even get near us. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like territorial like that too. Yeah. I want to get into that eventually. Cause I like, you know, when I, when I was in Hawaii, like pe they, they talked about certain breaks and stuff like what there is a gang mentality. Isn't there like with certain spots, isn't there? I, I mean, with surfing in general, it's kind of territorial and like going to other people's spots and respect and stuff like that. So it's like a gang. It's like you're going into their neighborhood kind of kind of. Yeah. You kind of have to like, I mean, the best way to go about it is if you're with someone, if you say you're traveling wh wherever far away, yeah, uh, Mor Morocco, I went recently and I have a good friend over there. So he took me out and I get to meet all the locals and stuff. So it's like a, it's an easier transition to go surf local spots. So but if, if you're just showing up by yourself, it's then you're fine. Kind of hard. It's kind of harder. Yeah. It's kind of like in skateboarding, like in Barcelona, that Makba place or something. It's like you can't just go there. You got to go there with like a local or something, right? To give I don't you... know about. I don't know about uh, that. I'm just, it I'm makes trying sense. To, yeah, I'm just trying to give an analogy. Is so you need to have someone to kind of give you a pass. Like he's cool. He could be here. Some spots. Some spots are more localized than others. But if you're going to surf like some crazy good wave that's really localized, like you probably can't surf it unless you're with like a local guy. Wow. No, what I always wanted to know what's what's why is that there that mentality? Is it like ownership, like they own the break or the wave? Like, where does that come from? I've always wondered uh, that. I don't know. The, I, I just don't think people want places getting too crowded. And uh -huh. like, say if it was easy to go, then it would probably get flooded with people. So then right. it become crowded and like, probably not as fun to surf for those guys, you know? Right. And wouldn't you say it has to do with um, them living closer to that region or break? Yeah. So, right. Yeah. That's like, like their backyard, in, right? Yeah. If it's in your hometown, your backyard, you grew up surfing the spot, you kind of want to protect it so it doesn't get too crowded. Okay. So how does, what, have you seen some crazy shit go down? I want to hear, but there's must've been some crazy things you've seen in the water, right? Mm. Like where some guy just comes in, he doesn't know anything. And he's like, just blowing the spot up. Like, Sometimes, yeah. I mean, it happens. I kind of just try to stick Stay to myself away. and just try and get my waves. That's I so. Is there like <laughs> sneak around and get my right. waves? And, yeah, get out. So it. So is there a verbal warning first? Like, hey, man, you, first warning, get out of here. Yeah, most cases. But usually, if you know what you're doing and you're like respectful, then most times you're fine. But oh. if if you if you don't know what you're doing and you're kind of like just going about just it flailing around mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. then then you're probably fine. harder harder yeah. to gain respect if you can't surf when does it get to the point where they said we warned you and they go out of the water and go to your car and uh, flatten your tires they might just do that in the beginning <laughs> it just depends on this everywhere's different some some places people are aggro <laughs> that's never happened to me but yeah it could happen if you get some guy on a bad day Man, there's a story, me and my brother, uh, you know, because we're from Poway. And so that's not near the ocean. We went to, um, I don't know if it was, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was in San Diego. It was a localized spot. Uh, I forgot that Cardiff by the sea. It was one of these spots, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a surf, it was localized. And when we got out of the water, this local surfer, I think he was on meth. He was an older guy, but he, he approached our uh, van. And he was like, you, you know, he's like, you guys got to get the fuck out and, of here. And on meth? I think he, he was like, he was really sketchy. My brother actually grabbed like um, a tool out of the van. Like I think a screwdriver, he grabbed something. 
because we were scared, you know, just two little Asian kids in our wetsuits and everything. So th- th- that's just like a bizarre. That doesn't happen all the time, right? No, that never happens to me. Really. It happened to me and my brother. I'm just letting you know it happened. Okay. Um, do you know a guy um, in San Diego? There's this he was like the Superman figure, Rob Machado. Yeah. OK, because I remember in the 90s, we were out and like people were like, that's that's the man. Is it, So is that that guy's a pro? He's pretty well known. Yeah, I've, I've done a couple of trips with him. He's super cool. He's kind mm-hmm. of like, yeah, he's kind of widely known for like really good style and kind of just being like a very smooth surfer and like smooth. a super cool guy. Yeah, right, right, right. I, but I just because I do remember him. Everyone was like, oh, that's Rob Machado. That's Rob Machado. And we're like. Oh, damn. Yeah, he's probably like one of the most famous pro surfers. Right. We've been no, doing it for years. Since the 90s. Since the ni- since yeah. I remember, this is in the 90s, like 92. 92 yeah, over 92. 20 years for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, going back to the, the bodyboarding, would a bodyboarder <laughs> get more respect if they uh, dro- drop need? Fuck. I don't know. I know, I know it's harder. <laughs> I don't know, though. No. Maybe like half surfing. It's like you're trying, but not. Okay, okay. Give me a sec. So you're it's like saying you want, you want to be a surfer, but, but it's kind of not. Like you're 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 like it's like jumping into a pool. You're like sticking your foot in, but you're not jumping in all the way. Yeah, you're kind of like yeah. I don't know. I don't know if surfing's for me, so I'm just gonna put one one foot up and see how it goes. So would you relay it to? Someone like that was learned skateboarding, but they're like on their knee instead of like just standing up. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I won't ask any more bodyboarding questions. Do you want to uh, do just... a drop? Do you want to do drop knee? No, 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 no. I was just, no, because I noticed that even back then, the bodyboarders that drop knee instead of prone, they had a little bit more respect. Not much more, but a little bit more respect within the, the bodyboarders. I mean, to be honest, I, I don't think I'd be able to do drop knee bodyboarding. So I don't know. It okay. seems hard. It seems hard. Yeah, it seems harder, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why not so just who, stand up all so the way? So what the fuck do I know? Okay. I can't do it, so. What about this? There was a guy, I forgot his name. I don't know if he was, um, but he was a bodyboarder that actually stood up on the board. So what? do, do they get extra points for that? Hmm. It's kind of weird because they're at that point you would just get a surfboard right it's like right right so surfers are probably looking at that like dude why don't you just get a board just get a board that's like twice the length and you know (laughs) you're surfing and you're gonna go a lot faster right yeah okay all right i'm a bit confused (laughs) okay okay i will i swear to god luke no more bodyboarding uh questions okay Okay, we're gonna go on okay okay so going back to to your um surfing career and everything what what do you think were the most difficult things to like navigate around like certain breaks or uh like maneuvers like how'd you learn how to like flourish in that Mm, i think just putting in the time like Mm. seems like the best surfers are the ones that are surfing the most Mm -hmm. so like trying to figure out everything to do with the ocean and surfing in general. You just have to surf a lot, a lot, a all lot. the time. Like my parents would bring me down to the beach in the dark. Like right. when I was eight, nine years old, 10 years old, and me and all my friends would go surf and we do that every single morning. Just at nighttime also. Well, we go super early in the morning and then we surf before dark too. So we surf wow. twice a day. Usually. Oh my God. So, uh, has there, ever been any dangerous because i just i saw a surfing documentary about um is it mark Fu the good the guy that drowned at mavericks yeah like have you been in a situation where the the waves are so big that you you're like you're like fighting for your life or something yeah some i mean some breaks it's kind of i mean it depends on how big it is but generally like the bigger it is the more dangerous it is mm. so sometimes mm. you'll get stuck down and you even when you're swimming back up to the top, you can't get up. Then how do, you, like, how do you deal with that mentally? Like, how do you even learn to do that? I mean, I think just doing it over and over again. Like, that's the only way to feel comfortable. And then not being too freaked out. Because, like, once you start to panic underwater, you're done. then that's when your, your air 
you lose air quicker. So you so just have what, to stay calm. So that's, I was, that was my next question. Like, what are the things that you have to do like to, to make it through that? You just stay calm. Um, yeah. Like stay calm is the biggest thing. Like mm -hmm. once you start freaking out, then your, your oxygen just goes and then it's even harder. You know? Right. Right. So like, right. no matter how bad the situation, if you stay calm, then you'll be better off. Right. 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 So, um, like what are the, um, this out of my own curiosity, what are like the most dangerous surf spots like in, in, in California, would you say? Mm, I think, have you seen Mavericks? Like yeah, that's, Moon Bay? yeah, yeah. I saw that documentary where that like Mark Fu. Yeah. 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 That's probably the, the biggest wave in California. I don't surf that. So I'm what, good on that. you're good on that. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So what makes the, Mavericks so dangerous. Just explain that to the viewers and listeners. Why I is that it, break so I, different? It's just the size, like how big it is. It's like it could be sixty foot face, so it's huge. Sixty foot? Yeah, huge. That's like storybook, like crazy yeah. shit. It's crazy. I steer clear. I'm good on that. Have and what about your, your your other surfing homies? Have they have they have they uh? Have they surfed that? Yeah, some one of my friend Billy Kemper is like big wave world champion. Mm -hmm. So he's he surfed, he's one of the best ever in big waves. And, and I'll go on trips up? with them mm -hmm. to certain spots, but I never go to like the crazy big spots. Where is Maverick located? Like just explain that again. Like it's where's near it? it's before San Francisco. It's like 30 minutes south of San Francisco. And don't you have to like paddle way the fuck out there? Any too? Yeah, it's way. It's like way, way. Out. It's like a half mile out, super far out. So what else makes it dangerous? Is it like the reef or like the? Uh, uh I mean, I haven't surfed this. So I don't know that much about it, but I know there's rocks in the inside, and I think it's just like really, it's just big and powerful and just scary. I don't know. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah, cause uh, that just looks like undoable. Like, just... yeah, I have friends that go. I have multiple friends that go surfing. I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. I'll, I'll stay. Oh, like stay other, like other pro surfers. Yeah, they're like, we're good. We're hitting it up. Yeah, I have a few that are super into like big wave surfing. Yeah, but I don't know. I need so, to ease my way into it still. So, so can, that's a, that's a very good um, maybe a segue into the next thing. So in pro surfing, there's different styles of surfing itself is what you're saying? Big wave, yeah, there, small wave, go ahead. Yeah, there's kind of, there's like competition people, mm -hmm. high performance uh, contest surfers, and then there's big wave contest surfers. There's air guys, and there's mm -hmm. like a, diff a bunch of different people that have like specialties. So what's your specialty? Are you kind of all around, like well-rounded? Uh, I like getting barreled. Like that's my main thing. Mm -hmm. Like getting in the wave, that's all I want to do. Now, des describe to the viewers and listeners what that sensation is like. Is it is it kind of like an outer body experience being in the in the tube like that? Kinda, yeah. It's I mean, it's the best. It's the best thing I've ever experienced in life, ever. So ever, it's like it beats sex and anything, gambling. Anything. If you would trade it in for all that, all of it. The, I mean, every trip I go on now is like, I, I figure out if somewhere is going to be good. I book a ticket and I leave tomorrow, like that quick. I'll drop everything. Doesn't matter when. So didn't you do that? Cause I was, we're trying to link up before. Weren't you like Tahiti? You're like somewhere else. I was in, I went to Indonesia. Indonesia. Like six, six weeks. I think that was it. So you're, you just like, just got on a plane. Once the swell, you heard a swell was coming in. You're like, I'm out. Yeah. My, we were like trying to figure out where we could go and something kind of popped up to where we could figure out how to get a visa in. Cause the COVID situation has kind of been tricky. Gnarly. So we yeah. Figured out yeah. visas, mm -hmm. did that for like a week straight and then left and went on a boat for 22 days with me and my friends. Yeah. So you took a boat to the break. Yeah. We flew all the way to Indonesia and then we got on a boat, a big boat. And How did you arrange it, that, dude? That's crazy. It's a lot of moving pieces. I kind of, my friend kind of like initiated the trip, but yeah, it was, it was insane. It was like the first trip we did like during COVID and stuff too. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. I remember, I remember cause we're supposed to link up and you're like, dude, yeah, I want to, but dude, like I'm out here. Yeah. So we figured out how to do that too. And it's cool. Cause 
we're in a boat. There's no one around. It's like we're on a little bubble. So there's no worries. All we do is surf, eat, and sleep. How did you eat though? Did you guys bring food? Like, how do you even get no, there, food? There's like a chef on the boat. Like it's kind of bougie a little bit. Oh, so it's, it's, it's plush. It's, it's pretty, it's like the place is like the Mentawai islands. It's an island chain off of Indo uh -huh. and off of Bali and all that stuff. And it's, it's like the dream place to go for a pro surfer. Like, it, yeah, this dream, like it's just yeah, perfect it's conditions, crystal blue water. And we scored perfect waves with no one around for three weeks straight. so there was no there was no other competition for the waves not like a couple people here and there that were on like land camps or there's a couple boats but not many people could get in and we right. like figured, how, figured out how to go and we went and did it wow now what about sleeping and lodging like where did you sleep at night um we're on like a catamaran so there's like bunk rooms on either side so i split a room with two other of my friends or so it's like bunk bed situation on the boat yeah oh so there's beds in the on the boat yeah you don't leave the boat for for three weeks what yeah it's crazy it's crazy and then what about showers and stuff yeah there's showers there's everything on the boat you don't have to leave jeez louise and all we were doing is surfing like the first three days of our trip we were in the ocean for a total of 24 hours in three days what the so you're in the water most of the time all day all How, day. what about the water temperature what's that like warm like 80 what yeah dude well so, so with something like that how do you fund that how do you pay how do you fund that kind of trip you just pull together any money that you have and go, like kind of pitch in together and go do do sponsors do your board sponsors or, or or wetsuit sponsors help with those costs? Yeah, Ruka, you know Pat and Ruka, they mm -hmm. they're my main sponsors. So that's that's how I'm able to be a pro surfer in the first place and travel and do all this stuff. Shout out to Pat, dude. Pat's the man. Pat, Shout out the, to Pat. Good the main, dude. The main the main dog. dude. Main dog. That's um, that's the reason why I'm a pro surfer now is because Pat. Because so he he allowed I that was, to happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been friends with them for a while. And before I wrote for Ruka, I was friends with them. Okay, let's so, let's talk about that. That's our next segue. So, yeah. okay, so you brought up Ruka and uh, for, because I just saw you on their website. You you have a premiere feat. You're on there, on their roster, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're on there. How did you, okay, so you, how did you meet Pat? I met Pat through, you know, Zach Naminsky. Um, I might know his face, but I don't. He was, was he, he was there working. that day during the lunch or? When we ate, uh, he might have been, but I was friends with which was Pat's assistant at the time. Uh -huh. So I was good friends with his assistant and then started hanging around Ruka a little bit and met Pat and we became friends. And then when like the time was right and I just slid straight in, he wanted to sponsor me. And then I've been with them for the last like how many, how many years, years almost? Wow. I mean, that's yeah. a good company to be on, dude. Yeah. Can't... And we were, fr we were yeah. friends before. So it just like was perfect like so it was mostly just on the homie tip it wasn't like he didn't he he probably knew you surfed right yeah he he knew i was he like, knew you were good yeah surfing's one thing but i feel like everyone he kind of sponsors is like someone that's whatever does their their specific sport surfing skating whatever but he's a lot of the times he's friends with them before and it's kind of like right. a, a pre-existing relationship so like when it happens, it's a, it's like a natural thing. It's a That's natural why, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Progression. Kind of like a family like that. Cause everyone's kind of like curated in that way. Everyone gets right. along. That's so crazy. So, cause you have to think from his position being a business of, owner of Ruka, right? He, he must get submi submissions of skaters and surfers all the fucking time. Right. Yeah, yeah for sure. Especially now. I mean, everyone needs a sponsor. It's COVID's like the toughest time for any of that. So for any of that, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. I mean, with anyone, I think everyone wants to be a pro server too. So everyone, I'm sure they're getting hit up about stuff all the time. But yeah, yeah. it's kind of like a tight knit family. Yeah, Ruka. Vibe, which it seems like it's it's a perfect fit for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're perfect. amazing. Yeah, and it's not just surfing. They kind of branch out into everything. So oh, I know. Like with uh, yeah, just everything, music or. Yeah, music, art, skating, art, MMA, yeah. everything. Even like graphic design, like like uh, kind of like uh, you know, shirt design, all that stuff, streetwear, yeah. all that stuff. 
Yeah, um, so. That's amazing, dude. That's yeah, that's so that's cool that happened like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so what about the surfer out there that's super good, right? They might be from a different town. How do they get hooked up then? Mm, and they, they think, might be super good too. You know what I'm saying? I think, I mean, it depends. Like if you're really, really good, you, people are going to find out who you are. Like I was kind of in... I kind of grew up surfing in like the hub of all the surf companies, Orange County. Oh, so I'm like right, from right. where all, all the surf companies are in Tustin and in Orange County. So it's kind of like easier to get eyes on you. But yeah. say you're from like somewhere kind of out there in Indonesia or something, it might be harder to it might like be harder, right? Get a start. Yeah. So I'm super lucky to just be born into like. In that area industry. right yeah. right so like what other like quicksilver like other all the other companies are out there rip curl yeah at, at most of every surf company is in orange county that's crazy and then would you say that even like a lot of the riders were already at the spots too like they already saw you out in the water what do you mean like like like, like just you said all the companies are there that so like the whole community is there that most likely they they knew you from the yeah. water you know being in the water yeah, how it start like starts usually is you're just doing competitions, like growing up from however old, nine, ten years old, and that's how I got my first sponsor. Cause you do good in the contest and they're like, Oh, this kid's good. I want to give him clothing or whatever. Oh, you know? right. So that's a good segue to uh yeah. uh competition. So when did you start getting into that? Mm, I probably started doing like longboard competitions when I was like seven, six, seven. Damn. Super young. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. And then yeah. that's how you do it. Then you, you start entering these contests and then people take notice. Yeah. Yeah. If you're winning contests and stuff, then people kind of figure out like, oh, this kid's pretty good. We'll try and get him sponsored or whatever, you know. Do you think it improves your chances? Because I'm sure just like with skateboarding, do you think because people there's some skaters that don't enter any like X games. They just put out street parts or whatever. Is it yeah. the same with surfing where there's just like soul surfers there? They, you know, they rip, but they, they're not in the contest. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I haven't done contests in like years since oh, I was, you have it No, like six years now or something. So, you, so when I, did, yeah, go ahead. I kind of, I did contests for most of my life. And then at a certain point I was like, this is not fun for me anymore. And I kind of just want to like chase waves and go where I want to go, you know? Because right. the contest schedule is like preset for the year. So you kind of end up going to places that aren't that good. Uh -huh, and you're just like, uh -huh. Fuck, what am I doing here? Like right, the waves right. or whatever. So what, once I kind of got over that, that's when I started just doing like video parts and traveling to try and get barreled. Right, that's all right. The, yeah, yeah. So how does that work? How does that trajectory work? Like, or do you have like a photographer or a filmer that's that's with you all the time? Mm, no not all the time usually like if a trip pops up we'll kind of reach out to a couple of filmers that we know mm -hmm. and try and just get get a good crew together to come with us because usually like the trips i go on will be like me and a couple friends most of the time right how do they i i just thought i just thought of this because with skateboarding you know it's like just the streets but how to become a surf filmer like what kind of cameras like how do you learn that shit I don't know. Usually it's like young kids that kind of just get their hands on like a couple thousand dollar camera and just start shooting for fun. And then if they're good, then they get invited on trips and kind of build their name that way. How do you get good at that? Do you, don't you have to like know the ocean as well? Like how to duck dive and how to yeah, I mean, stay safe? Yeah. If, I mean, the water filmers are they have the hardest job because they have to get in the wave with you. How do they manage to do that? They just, they pull it off and try not to get sucked over at the same time. So, so they're trying they, to get you, they're trying to get you in the barrel, but not get pulled over the wave. But do they have like a board themselves or are they just swimming? No, just swimming. With How the fuck do they do fins. that? I don't know. I wouldn't want to do it. It's fucked. That's dangerous, man. Yeah. I, 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 I hope they're getting paid well doing that. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are. Like, I, I, I'm wondering this now, too. Like, how do they how do they sustain a living? Do they have sponsors being like a surf filmer or how does that work? I think some of them do, but they kind of just get paid by the surfers. Like, oh, if, the or, 
the oh. surfers pay for the filmers to go on trips or really the surf company yeah but the surf company they'll pay for the filmer to to shoot the guys so every trip we go on we're paying for the filmers to come with us that's crazy dude that's yeah. crazy where are some of the best spots you've ever surfed in your life like country what countries what break like go ahead mm -hmm. Indonesia, the, the trip I was telling you about, I went on a couple months ago. That was probably some of the best waves I've ever got for sure. Really? Indonesia, yeah, Indonesia is big. <clears throat> I've been to Morocco twice this year, which mm -hmm. is insane. That's one of my favorite spots. Um, Tahiti has really good waves. I mean, oh, it's kind Tahiti. Of endless. Yeah. Endless. You it's didn't endless. even mention Hawaii. You would think like a person would just say Hawaii, but that's not necessarily the case, huh? I mean, Hawaii's super good. It just tends to be crowded. So I'm, what like I'm trying to get barreled, but then but be away from people. Right. I was at the um because Ruka ha they have their own uh surf house on the uh, North Shore, right? Yeah, the Ruka Loha they do every year. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. cause 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 they brought Monchi out there, but then I actually walked down and I looked at the break and I'm like. Dude, it looked powerful. Like, yeah, it's scary. You could feel it from the beach. It's oh, yeah. It's so yeah, yeah. I felt it. I'm like, what the hell? Like, um, I don't know how you guys do that. Yeah, it's, it's Hawaii's scary. It's crazy powerful. And what, like, makes, what, what, makes it, what makes it scary? Especially that break. By that it's just I, like pipeline and those waves are just like very shallow and super just powerful. Yeah, and, yeah, it's just scary, and it's crowded. So you like mix all those things together, and it's fucking hectic. And don't you have to really be on your toes? Because let's say uh, someone snakes you, that could be your life right there, right? If someone, yeah, you have to be like super aware of everything that's going on. That's where I try to like go to spots where there's minimal people, so I can just like focus on trying to get the best waves, and mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with like too many people. Because like, right. the more people get involved, and then it gets kind of like. It's less fun. Has that ever happened to you where someone snake? Describe to the viewers and listeners what's snaking. Because I've, yeah. Snaking is when you're going on the wave already and then someone drops in front of you. So basically like. that. There's rules, right? Yeah. That's the yeah. no, number one rule, right? No snaking. Yeah. No, no snaking. Yeah. And so I'm sure there's mad fights that have occurred because of that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, all around. That's like the number one thing. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. No, don't. Do you know who Kainoa McGee is? Kainoa McGee? He's a pretty mm -hmm. well, I think he started as a bodyboarder, but he's like from Hawaii, but there's a footage of him actually fighting someone on the beach. Oh, the, and, yeah, I think I've seen that. You saw that, right? Yeah. So Hawaiians are gnarly with that, huh? With yeah, the kinda, I, I haven't seen it too much. I think it used to be worse like back in the day. But I think now it's kind of like easier to get in trouble for that type of stuff. So there's not many like, especially in Orange County and around here, there's not many like fights on the beach. It's mostly just verbal arguments in the water. Like, hey, dude, like. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. But no one's really fighting. Yeah, you like, seem like who, laid who back anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who wants to fight? Like we're trying to serve. You know? and, and not only that, this is one thing I, I, I don't understand about you guys' uh, culture is the ocean is like, every it's for it's for everyone isn't it it's like nature and that's why i'd never understood like the entitlement is like this is my wave you know what i mean yeah people just get territorial and they really you just don't want your spot to get overly crowded with people coming from other areas and then it becomes like the break that i kind of grew up surfing lower oh, trestles yeah, yeah let's shout that out lower trestles that's your you okay mm -hmm. yeah it's the most crowded spot in california like it's crazy. And that's your spot. Like you grew up. Yeah. I grew up surfing out there and that's like where me and my friends are probably like the locals out there, but it's still, it's crazy. It's just overly crowded with everyone from all of California. So it's like a shit show. Okay. So let's say, let's play this out. Let's say you were just to show up there one day with your homies, you know, the, the, the other locals you grew up, would they get out of your way? Like, Oh shit, that's Luke. Luke's coming. Hmm. No, I kind of just keep to myself and like, I'll like stay all the way out the back. So I catch like good waves and then paddle around. And the go. crowd? I just paddle around the crowd and go out the back again. 
So I'm just, I'm silent. So you're like a silent assassin. You're like, yeah. you, I'm not, you, like, uh, I'm not burning people. I'm just like kind of burning people, like just paddling around people. So what is burning? What does that mean? Burning people? Like, like Dropping cutting in, people off. Yeah. Cutting people off. I don't, do, I don't do that. I just kind of like weasel my way back out to the spot where I can get another wave. So, okay. So what you do technically is you get, since you know the ocean probably better than just, you know, your average surfer, you know where to paddle out to get on the wave first. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> usually, I just go, usually I go far out. At furthest out than anyone so i could keep cutting the good waves that's amazing dude and then yeah. how did you learn that like hold up i always wondered this how do you study the ocean like that where you just know okay it's gonna break there is that just well experience? i mean trestles is specific like it breaks in the same spot every time you know mm -hmm. so the wave comes in and breaks like it doesn't break too much further out or you know so you can kind of tell where to sit when you've been surfing it, like, I don't know, I've been surfing it since I was like eight or something, 10 so you years know, old. You know it. Yeah, but it's super easy, straightforward. Like if you want to go surf, you can go out there and you uh -huh. can get a set. Right, are you good going left and right? You're, going, you're good going both ways? Mm, I What's like your going preference? Right, I like going right first. So my facing the wave. Facing the wave. So you're, uh, you're not a goofy footer then, you're regular nah, footed? Regular foot. Are you goofy or regular? Goofy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get in the next segment. How hard would it be for you to teach me how to surf? It'd be the same. It'd I be tried the same. in Hawaii, brother. Oh, it didn't work? No, no, I got a lesson. God, I forgot who taught me. There, you know this guy. God, I forgot his name. I should give him a shout out. He's cool with the Ruka heads. Uh, he's, I think he's a pro too, but he actually um, went out with me. You know how like... Um, they have surfboards just lined up. I just grabbed like a long, like a longer board and he's like, let's go. And so he took me now. Where did where, you go? Waikiki? No, it was at the North shore, but like where it's not gnarly. When like, you walk down, you know, facing it, we okay, went to the, yeah. we went to the right of it. And he took okay. me out there. I stood up a few times, but I didn't, I d couldn't go left or right. I just kind of stood up and I went, ah, and I like fell. <laughs> yeah. You need a better spot. Like, so I mean, that's, that's not a good you, spot. That's how you learn, though. You're not going right or left. You're just going straight, you know? I, I stood up barely on the whitewash wash for like a second or two, but I'm like, oh, and then I fell off. I mean, at least you got up. Some people can't get up. Oh, so that, that, that that's pretty impressive, just standing up? But then you got to just figure out how to be on the board longer. Okay, but what about how, how learning to like go left or how, how do you know you got you got to focus on you got to stay on the board <laughs> straight first before you start doing crazy shit okay so there's a progression you first uh, let, let's go over that so you first learn how to duck dive like how does that work i mean paddling you have to learn how to paddle first so can you learn that in a day yeah okay so it's, you... it's just like swimming you're just <laughs> okay it's similar to swimming but on a board so you first learn how to paddle Okay. Paddle, and then the second, the second is standing up. And that's on the whitewash, just. Or, yeah, or you practice on the beach, just popping up quick to your feet. Oh, you could do it like that? Yeah, just to, like, get a feel for it. Okay, so what's the next step? Paddling into the wave and then standing up on the board and catching the wave. Catching the wave before it breaks. Yeah. And or you can catch it after it breaks, too. And that's the hardest thing to, to do, right? Mm, the hardest is probably like a late takeoff like when right when the wave's breaking and sucking out then yeah. and dropping in you know that's the hardest yeah because if you get in early then it's easier because it hasn't broken yet or if you catch it after it breaks just the whitewash you know so it's that's pretty easy too but getting it when it's really steep that's like the most critical thing to do and you learned that as a kid, like you knew all this growing, like you learned that like, boom. Mm, yeah. Not too young. Like you start doing it more and more like, I don't know. Cause that's how you get barreled essentially most of the time. Yeah. Sometimes you can get in early, but a lot of times it's like late takeoff and steep. So you have to be like super quick. Yeah. So would you say that you get a lot of, um, 
you get a rush. It's kind of like a dopamine. Don't you get like a dopamine hit? Like, like just endorphins. It's like, adrenaline and endorphins. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's what you're craving for, right? Wouldn't you say? Kind of, yeah. Like adrenaline rush and endorphins. And it's kind of like you're just in the moment with everything. Like you're not thinking about anything on the wave. You know? So it's meditative in a way. Surfing can be like a meditation. Yeah. Right? I think a lot of people do it in that way to just like get away from normal life and just like go sit in the ocean and surf. Like, yeah, you're you, most of the time you're not thinking about anything else, but surfing That's and trying amazing. to get the best waves. That's amazing, man. You got a blessed life, man. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. It's, That's it's crazy. Nuts. Especially it's during the, like everyone, you're everyone's stuck inside and getting crazy. Like there's nothing to do. California how is COVID? Uh, yeah. How has COVID affected surfing? Has it affected it at all? I think, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, it's harder to travel and stuff like that. And I think it's affected everything. For but you're sure. still surfing, right? Yeah. Every day. Uh, most days it's been small, but you're right, I'll, I'll, drive, right, I'll right. drive up to San Francisco or there's, you could surf every day now, which is good. Every day, yeah. Yeah. You, have you never go down to San Diego? Mm, it's kind of a different world from LA because I'm in Mar Vista. So it's like, yeah, San Diego seems so far away. But what are, aren't there spots down there like Solana? Yeah, there's and a ton. It's just usually Cardiff. when there's waves, I'll go up to like Santa Barbara area because oh, it's closer to LA. Right, there's spots there. Yeah, good spots. Good spots in Santa Barbara. Yeah. dude, we gotta like, go, dude. I know. Okay, I want to hold you to that, and I need to hold myself. You gotta teach me, man. You know, dude, you gotta teach. Anytime. I'm it's learn, man. It's cold though. Right now it's freezing. So what do I need? Do I need like a full body suit? Like what's the situation? Yeah. Yeah. You need a full body suit. How you much is to. a board? How much is a board? Like how, what, how, how do I pick? I don't have board? suits for you. I have boards. Oh, oh, you, oh, you got all that? Yeah. I have everything. <laughs> oh. dude, let's go. That'd be amazing, dude. That'd be amazing. We could go I to could Venice. Learn if I could, or where, yeah. You wherever. think I could, I could stand? I just want to learn how to stand up. We can make it happen for sure. Does skateboarding help a little? Cause you know, I know how to skate a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. maybe for balance, but, but it's not different. Much more. Surfing, like, all of surfing, you're paddling. So that's like when people get tired, cause you think of surfing, you think of standing on the board, but most oh. of the whole time you're paddling the whole time. So you need cardio, dude. Yeah. How are do you, you on, how do you get your you cardio, cardio you, program or what? No, I'm not. I'm, I would be gassing, dude. I would be literally drowning out there. That's the thing. So you need so to build up bring the lungs, you out you're, right? You're not going to be able to hang. Yeah, I would drown, dude. Yeah. So we got to keep you in the shallow. We'll go to like Venice or something chill. <laughs> and shallow. Dude, the time is already, you're already done, basically. This is the time now. Luke, I appreciate you, man. This is the time now. If you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors, your social media, Facebook, website, whatever, go ahead. This is your time, brother. This is my time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Who do I shout out? You got to shout out Ruka, dude. Me, Pat, Instagram, yeah. Luke Davis the Gray. Spell that out. Is that, yeah, spell that Luke out. Luke Davis the Gray, G R E Y. G R E Y. Yeah. That's like my main social and stuff like that. Are there, I, I've always wondered this. Are there surfing groupies? There is for because sure. I'm looking at your Instagram and so, so, some of the comments that the, the, these are like super models like commenting on your shit. And I'm like, you go, Luke. Maybe those that's might not amazing. Be, I don't think those are groupies, I think but they know about friends. your shit, man. They know yeah. about your shit, brother. You know what I mean? But so that exists. Yeah, it's a thing. There's for sure surfer, surfer groupies. Are there stalkers? I was, are there stalkers <laughs> where they'll just be at the spot, like in their cars, like, hi, Luke, we're here. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't had any, but I, I'm sure people have. No, what have they showed up, shown up at your house? Like they just happen to be parked on the street. Like, hi, no, Luke. I, I'm sly, dude. Are you kidding me? Luke, no one's hi, finding I me. knew you'd be back, Luke. I knew you'd be back. <laughs> Luke, I'm here. <laughs> no, none of that. So you know how to just the same way you know how to navigate yourself in the water. You know how to navigate outside of that, away from all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Sly. I, I. You're super slick, then. Yeah, you gotta say slick. I'm just letting you know, brother. They're looking for you. The girls are yeah. looking for you. The girls are looking for you. So just you just got. Do do you wear? Do you have like different disguises or something? Or 
No. Like, do you wear like a hat and you're like, like, it's like, <laughs> just like, just chilling like this? Like, no, I mean, yeah. I'm not. Now's the time if you're a really famous person that I was telling someone, you have to wear a mask everywhere. So it's easy. I'm yeah. not to that point yet. So, but if you yeah. are super famous, now's the time. That's amazing, dude. That's amazing that you're, you're able to do that. That's yeah. amazing. Okay. So Luke Davis, the great on Instagram. That's uh, the main one, main one. Shout out to Pat and Ruka. That's your sponsor. Yeah. Pat, the yeah we OGs, the best. Okay, can we, can we give that their website out just so we, they can check your profile and some of the goods they got? Yeah. Ruka.com. That's all, all their gear, all the best stuff. It's my favorite clothing. Dude. Thanks for your time. Hey man, I still want to do this. In the, I'm not, I still Let's want to go do this for I'm sure, ready. for sure, for sure. It's, it's small right now. Too. And it's positive. It'll be good for me to get out of the house and just to get in the water. Yeah. You don't want to go crazy. No, I'm not going to get crazy. This we're, is just we're crazy enough. We have I to know. I know. Just, just, just basic steps, just stepping stones, stepping stones. I'm not get trying to, to get feet crazy. First, feet mm -hmm. first before you start doing left, right barrels, all that. Just shit. feet first, feet first. Straight forward. <laughs> Forward momentum. Go straight for. I appreciate your time, brother. I really do. Thank you no so worries, much. Man. Luke but Davis, the gray pro surfer, historical Stevie Weeby, our first surfer. Follow him today. Follow his career. And where could they see some of your footage, my man? Uh, either like YouTube or Vimeo. Just search my name. and Oh, come, Vimeo. Or just Google it. Yeah. So they could see you on Vimeo too? Yeah, just Google Luke Davis surfing and stuff will pop up for sure. Thanks for bringing that up. So yeah. on Vimeo, type in Luke Davis. Yeah, you'll okay. find it. Google, Dude, whatever. Thanks for your time, brother. I appreciate you. And then I'll see you out in the water, hopefully, soon. Let's, I'm ready. Thank okay. you for having okay. me. Oh, yeah, Next no time doubt. we do it in real life. No doubt, for sure, for sure. Thanks for your time. And then you can get off now. I still have to do a couple more announcements, Luke. Okay. Okay, for my Patreon and everything. Thank you, brother. I'm going to text you for your number so we can get out there. For sure. For sure. Is that how, this is how you do it? Shotguns. Shotguns. Okay. Shotguns. Okay, brother. Yee! Woo! Woo! Okay. Okay. Hey, Aloha. Right. Aloha. Peace. Late. Okay. Okay. Late, mate. Shoot. Okay. Okay. There you go. That was Luke Davis. That was a fun one. Our first surfer. Okay. So uh, a couple more announcements. Uh, we do have, God, where is my, where are my sheets? Hold on. Give me a sec. Um, I'll just, I'll just do it off the top. Uh, Patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. If you want to um, support uh, the podcast and the content, go there. Um, Instagram slash uh, Q U A N G O U. That's my Instagram Kwang U. Um, really close to finishing my concept album. Um, go to Stevie Weeby bandcamp.com for all my music. I, and I also have a PO box. Um, uh, if you want to send uh, fan mail or packages, I do have a vlog where I, uh, unbox things, uh, 1425 North Cherokee Avenue PO box 1391 LA, California, nine zero zero nine three. Give me a sec. And I think that's it. I think I covered it all. Um, to, hold up. And that's it. Because I, I did have a thing where uh, I shout out the new patrons. I can't patrons. I can't. I can't find it. Thanks for uh, tuning in. I'm. I'm also doing more um, war zone uh, content, and people seem to like it. I'm not good at the game at all by any means, but people seem to like just the interaction. Um, so I guess ch check some of that out. I'm just kind of experimenting here. Thank you. Have a great Christmas or Christmas may have passed by because I'm ahead on uh, episodes. Thanks for sticking with me and checking out this episode. Luke Davis, the gray on Instagram, Luke Davis, pro surfer. Peace.